action. Mm -hmm. That is something that uh, prevention efforts focus on. Uh, because if, if we only looked at trying to address the bullies and the victims, those, those are really a small number of uh, children in each school. The, the largest number are the bystanders. And so addressing um, specific things that bystanders can do, as you suggest, one of the things is to step up and to say that they don't believe that is, it's all right. Because sometimes bullies get nonverbal approval from the people who are around watching what's going on. So taking a stand uh, is important. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, reporting it to authorities um, is, is something else that bystanders can do. Um, even though there may be the sense that they're tattling, um, I think it's really important for bystanders to understand that bullying really does lead to uh, great harm, physical, psychological, social, um, types of harm and so stepping up is important. Um, I, think, I think that it's such, a, such an important point to make because the, the whole idea of kids tattling on other kids, this, okay. this really is a completely different kind of situation right. where you know you are um, really doing, you have to think about the incredible harm that's being done to the victim mm -hmm. and you have to really think of yourself as being someone who's really truly doing the right thing mm -hmm. by, by going to an authority or by um, trying to help the victim in a situation like that. Mm -hmm. it, it's really something we have to empower our children to understand. Mm -hmm. This is a very positive action to right. do something about a situation yes. like this. Um, and in fact I believe that the best types of training are those that um, allow children to to put themselves in imaginary scenarios and you know actually try try to think about how they would behave in a situation like that because that I think helps um, young people make that differentiation between what might be tattling um, and what might be a really important uh, thing for them to do in stepping up and speaking about speaking up about a bullying situation that they're observing. Let's talk about some gender differences in bullying. Mm -hmm. um, do you in your research see any differences between the genders either in the amount of bullying they do or in the way they, they bully? All right. Well, my recent research is focused on cyberbullying. And interestingly, I have not found any significant gender differences between uh, the number of males and females who engage in cyberbullying. Well, interesting, because the stereotype is that girls are more involved in yes. cyberbullying. However, when we, when we look at other types of bullying, you know, the physical bullying, punching up somebody in the schoolyard, uh, definitely seem to be more males engaging in physical bullying. Uh, and uh, some studies have indicated that girls tend to engage more in relational types of bullying, you know, spreading rumors or making fun of someone or the way they dress, uh, excluding them, those so, sorts of so things. So there's a real qualitative difference then. That's what you see in the difference in, in gender bullying. Yes. There, there's, a, there's a real qualitative difference to the way girls bully mm -hmm. as opposed to the way boys bully. Right. I think that's, that's what research has indicated. And, you know, the, there's been a whole lot of talk about the whole mean girl syndrome. Uh, where uh, young women suddenly become very, very mean towards um, some of their peers. And often I, I think what happens too is it's, it's not just necessarily one person constantly. They kind of go from one victim to another. Mm -hmm. I mean, I hear that described by a lot of the girls in high school, for example, that right. one person is on the out one day and then the next week someone else is on the out. Yes. And that's a much harder thing, too, I think, for the school to get a handle on because that is much more subtle mm -hmm. than the real public kind of bullying, the playground bullying. Mm -hmm. So it, it, just, it, it, it seems to me that it almost gets harder to get a handle on this than easier. It, you're right. It does get harder. And that's why talking about these issues, um, both in schools and in homes, is an important thing to do. Um, and, you know, if there's one thing that I would... Uh, say that I'd really like parents to do more is to talk with children, you know, even as they grow older in middle school and high school about these sorts of issues because uh, we know that, that young people often don't raise these issues themselves unless it's become such a huge 
concern to them that you know they they feel that they have no choice but to talk about it do you think there's something about the nature of our of our particular american school systems that um, kind of foster bullying because it really does seem like it's a problem as much as we pay it public attention to it and as much as we talk about it it is a problem that's not going away and kids are really finding new ways to bully mm -hmm. do you think there's something about the nature of our school system that might that might contribute to this I don't think that it's a problem only in this country because you know the research has been done in, in uh, countries all over the world and uh, bullying does seem to be an issue in all of these countries is there a culture cultural differences in the w in the way children bully do you do you know anything about that I'm not aware of specific research that looks at that but um, you know, I lived in Australia for 10 years, so certainly the sorts of things that I saw in Australia are very similar to what goes on in this country. And um, I'm originally from India, so I know that bullying definitely happened in Indian schools. Um, and, and the same with gen no gender differences either in, in diff among different cultures. It's still ch girls bully as much as boys, no matter what the culture. Um, I, I think it's the type of bullying that's different. Um, I, I do know from uh, you know the work that I did in India that relational bullying amongst girls I didn't see as much of that but I don't know that you know that was several years ago so things could have changed since then what can parents say to if their child has been bullied what can parents do to help that child feel better about themselves I think the, the whole piece about blaming themselves you know we know that victims often have a tendency to blame themselves and, and so and they do they their internal voice says I'm so stupid I'm so right. ugly I'm so fat whatever the issue might be yeah oh they, I they brought this on myself right um, and so the, the one of the things that parents can do is to address that issue right away and to let their child know that it is not their fault and that you know the this is a behavior that's wrong um, and you know they 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 are the victim rather than somebody who brought it on themselves um, so that that is I think one thing that that I would suggest I would also suggest taking uh, signs of depression very seriously um, because I, I, I think that large numbers of young people do um, have experiences with depression and very often parents tend to not take that v very seriously and to think you know my child's moody uh, he they'll or she's get gonna, over yeah, it yeah they're going to get over it it's those teenage hormones and that sort of thing and so for parents to really watch what's going on with their children and I know parents are so busy these days that it's it's hard sometimes to really uh, have a good handle on what's going on with your child. And if they do see signs of depression in their child, what do they do at that point very quickly? Uh, I think definitely uh, talk to your physician as a first step um, and then talk to your school counselor because th those are two resources that would be easily uh, reachable to all parents. Thanks so much. This, this is really a problem that everyone, everyone should be paying attention to, not just parents, I but the entire so. community. Thanks for joining us today on Health Vision. For upcoming episodes, viewer feedback, and links to important information on health, log on to our website at the address that appears on your screen. Health Vision is a production of the WOUB Center for Public Media.